everything that was blocking it. He pushes his powerful 360Z to its limit. It starts to spark. Officer Coyne pushes his own car to the limit. My legs get tired from pushing the pedal before. In another daring end run, the suspect suddenly slices over three lanes to exit, undaunted. The officer quickly steers into the mud. He must catch up. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The suspect is spun out on the exit ramp. The officer thinks this chase is over. It's not. Catching up again, the officer suddenly sees two headlights coming straight at him. He tries to block the suspect, but ends up getting blocked himself. He just hit my cruiser. The suspect tries another desperation move. He's going off the road. This time, cutting down a steep embankment. Big mistake. He's driving into the swamp. Once again, Officer Coyne stays right with him. The man is found moments later, cowering in the swamp. The stench is overpowering. But a swamp will seem like paradise compared to where he's going next. He's looking at 19 years on a variety of charges, including drug dealing and assault on an officer. Los Angeles. Police spot a black truck speeding through a residential neighborhood. As police try to stop him, the speeder makes a wild turn that would have killed anyone in his path. The officers intentionally spin him out. Thinking he might fall, they proceed to box him in. Police call this the pit maneuver. It takes experience, expert driving skill, and professional teamwork to pull it off. And these officers perform it flawlessly. So we thought it was necessary to use legal intervention, basically to push the vehicle around to stop him from going any farther in hopes that he would not injure anybody else. They have him in custody. From first call to arrest, the entire incident takes less than four minutes. San Bernardino, California. Like a scene from Easy Rider, this biker's looking for adventure, speeding down the highway with police hot on his tail. He's at about 100 miles an hour. He just about got nailed. Taunting the cops at every turn, the biker screams through lanes of traffic, defying officers' attempts to pull him over. Finally, the suspect appears to be giving up. Stopping north of 395, beyond the car. Watch out, But it's a trick. The biker pretends to slow down, then speeds up, heading straight for a dirt road where he thinks the cops can't follow. Okay, he's gone off the freeway now. But a police car can be a dirt bike, too, and the cops are right on his tail. He's bound for Maple Avenue. Back on surface streets, police officers finally move in and arrest the suspect. Now this speed demon is headed for prison. Orlando, Florida. This cyclist is driving at night without a headlight. Cops pull him over, but he decides to run. You are 24 minimum, go ahead. Up ahead, a taxi cab is turning left, straight into the path of the soaring cyclist. The biker barrels into the side of the cab. He's thrown onto the pavement. The cab is crushed. Amazingly, the passengers are not hurt. The cyclist's blood alcohol level tests two and a half times the legal limit. When you're chasing motorcycles, what makes it so dangerous is the incredible amount of speed they can get up to in just a few seconds. Los Angeles, California. In one of the fastest chases ever, a man bolts on his motorcycle when an undercover cop tries to stop him. Watch as he races right past a waiting officer on his own cycle. The uh, suspect has no regard for stoplights, stop signs, now traveling on surface streets off of Imperial at 120 miles an hour. He's wanted for 245, assault with a deadly weapon. Back on the freeway, the red Honda speeds in excess of 120 miles an hour. Yeah, this is a fool. And then now off the freeway, and I gotta tell you something, those were speeds, some of those high speeds were on surface streets through residential neighborhoods. Suspect down, suspect down. Amazingly, the suspect is still not subdued. His adrenaline is pumping so hard, he doesn't even know this chase is over. He's now struggling, he's struggling with the police, he's actually fighting the police officer. But the fight is finished and the wild ride over. Now this bad boy biker is trading his mean machine for a hospital gurney and some serious jail time. A canine unit consists of two officers. One of them happens to be a dog. The two are partners, but the relationship is a lot more than just that. Mess with a cop's dog, you've got real problems. Santa Ana, California. 
an enraged man with a history of domestic abuse runs from the law after threatening to kill his wife. The man barrels through the suburban streets with the fury of a madman. Half a dozen police bring up the rear. It's time this desperate daredevil's joyride is stopped. Spike strips in the center lane pierce his tires. The rubber shreds instantly. He rides on his rim, swerving crazily from side to side, back and forth in front of the suing officer. He finally loses control. But he still doesn't give up because he's believed to be armed. A canine unit is brought in to help subdue him. Unbelievably, the suspect tries to assault the police dog. Not too smart. In a canine unit, dogs are definitely a cop's best friend. Attempting to beat an officer's canine partner, pure insanity. He claims to have a broken leg, but as the cops apprehend the suspect, he easily walks away. Now he's facing multiple charges, including assault on a police dog. And the dog, a biscuit for a job well done. Red line, full throttle. Pedal to the metal. Exhilarating moment. Terrifying consequences. Jacksonville, Florida. On a lazy summer morning, Officer Otto Poteen stops a suspect for driving with his feet up on the dashboard. A quick radio check reveals that this may be a stolen car. I said, come on out of the car. When the suspect refuses to comply, the patrolman gets his pepper spray ready. Take care of it. Come on out of the car. He sprays, but too late. Officer Poteen is almost dragged beneath the wheels. There's obviously more to this than careless driving, and the troopers are right on him. This subject just took off. He drug Trooper Botine a little bit. The suspect has a fast little car and thinks he can outwit his pursuers. Cutting left, he doubles back, trying to lose the cops in heavier traffic. Uh, cross the median. With no respect for the safety of other vehicles, the suspect barrels through. Concerned for the innocent public, the trooper tries to pull over. The fugitive, however, doesn't give him the chance. Therefore, I think he hit uh, McIntosh. Spinning out on an exit ramp, the suspect drives back toward the highway. He just ran into uh, 425. Taking the next exit, he thinks he's home free. Okay, he's southbound on uh, 115. But the officers have a surprise. Another year ahead of me. Back off. The city's going to take him out. They steer him toward Sheriff Marcus Andrews, poised with a shotgun. In an amazing display of marksmanship, Andrews shoots out the left rear tire. He just shot at the car, Jax. DSO just shot at the car. Uh, he's, still, he's still running. Andrews' unerring aim hits the tire dead on as the car passes, doing almost 70 miles an hour. You can see the smoke as the left rear tire explodes. With the punctured tire shredding on the rim, the suspect re-enters the freeway. But it's no use. Up ahead, officers have forced the crippled car to the median. Brought down by one amazing shot, the contemptuous car thief can run no more. Moments ago, he was driving with his feet up. Not a care in the world. Now, thanks to one alert officer, the man will have plenty of time to put his feet up. Ten long years. The police see every side of human nature. That's what makes this job so interesting. But at times, the things that people do are so hard to understand, so puzzling, that when everything is said and done, you are only left with questions. Dallas, Texas. A helicopter monitors every mile as this grueling chase continues at speeds in excess of 90 miles per hour. Right now, several police department agencies are involved in this pursuit. That's the car down there. It is a white Buick. Looks like they may be getting ready to do a move. Oh, looks like he's going to be in northbound. It's now turned into a dirt road. And uh, looks like this road is about to make a sharp 90-degree turn. There's a parked police car right on his tail. The police are being particularly careful because they discovered the man's wife is in the car and that she's eight months pregnant. Oh, there's a car coming the other direction about a mile up ahead. As a matter of fact, it is the sheriff's deputy. Watch as the driver sees the approaching deputy and then suddenly pulls across the road, inviting the deputy into a head-on collision. Car pulled off the road, let him by. 
Miraculously, the deputy pulls off the road just in time to avoid a disaster. It's real stressful. I mean, you want to catch the suspect, but it was obvious that his speed never did slow, never did fluctuate, you know, he wasn't going to stop. It looked like the fugitive was playing chicken, and they're headed right towards the town of Denton. But before they can get to Denton, the luck runs out. The driver tries a series of bizarre twists and turns. He uh, reversed direction here. He started on one side of the road, went to the other side of the road, turned around. Of course, the police were following him. He's turning back on his own trail and eluding the cars behind him. He went behind the first two police cars. He rams past another patrol car, runs through a barrier, and incredibly, he speeds away. But he's just going too fast for the road. And once that heavy car starts to fishtail, it's all over. He started to lose it, went to the left, went back to the right, skidded, and hit a fence in a tree, hit a telephone pole. Wisely, the man makes no further resistance. We came out with his hands up. They had a box stand in there. There was nowhere to go. Amazingly, the woman was not injured in the crash, but she sits, staring in shock, unable to move, as her husband surrenders. You wonder if this man thought even once about the danger to his unborn child. This is actual in-progress footage of Grand Theft Auto. A man breaks into a truck. He smashes the window. The alarm goes off, but he doesn't care. He's behind the wheel and gone in 60 seconds. Next stop, Mexico, where he can sell it easily. But he has to get across the border first. He meets up with the other car thieves in his gang. And together they try to enter Mexico at the busiest time of the day. Here, U.S. Customs stops a stolen Suburban. The thief knows he's spotted and suddenly makes a mad dash for the Mexican border. He rams a tourist, pushing him through. The guards chase him on foot, but he breaks free for now. On the American side, the rest of his gang head back for the States. But Customs takes one of them down. Within hours, he gives up the names of his partners. Over 20,000 attempts are made each year to take stolen vehicles into Mexico. But thanks to U.S. Customs, more and more thieves are learning it's just not worth it. When it comes to speed, this could be the most outrageous chase we've ever seen. In this exclusive interview, we spoke with the suspect. I was just trying to get back in the city. When I could get back in the city, I thought I could get away. Jared Fitzgerald streaks through the Arizona desert at 165 miles an hour. This car has been reported stolen and so far has outrun the DPS officers for a good 30 miles. This Corvette was built for one thing, speed. And with no police ahead of him, this suspect has a real chance of outrunning the cops behind him. He'll have some work cut out for him up ahead here. There are several big rigs in a row that he's going to have to negotiate somehow. He's passing the first on the right shoulder. Very dangerous maneuver at that piece of beef. He's fishtailing. Oh, there he goes. He's in. He's in. He's in. This car is shattered into a thousand pieces. Smashing into the rear of the truck, the car disintegrates and the suspect is thrown from the wreckage. He skids along the desert floor, literally flying by the seat of his pants. He's moving. The suspect is sitting up. He's sitting up. He's still alive. Incredibly, this driver is still alive. He's on his stomach now. He's waiting for the police. But still, the cops are not taking any chances. This could be the luckiest man in the world. 165 miles an hour, no seat belt, smashes into a truck and not a scratch on him. This Corvette is a total wreck. It's not going anywhere. In fact, the only thing moving are the windshield wipers. Yeah, I've been chased by the cops before. And I wasn't worried about wrecking. I was actually the least of my worries at the time. I just I kept on thinking I could get away. I wasn't thinking about the consequences. 